Okay, so for those who already know, uh, most of these models are used to predict certain values, right? So based on the past experience, past uh, uh, values, we want to predict what will happen next on the dependent variable. That is why, based on the changes in all the x's, right? That is the independent variable. Now, what happens is that let's say I predict some value of y uh, based on the value of x, right? Uh, and the actual y is a bit different from it. So the difference between these two, that is the actual prediction and my prediction is called as the prediction error. Now this prediction error can be either way. For example, let's take, uh, I'm predicting the salary. Okay. My y is the salary and my x is your grades. Okay. So there is some kind of relation here. Let's take a very simple straight line. Uh, now, Based on the increase in grades, your salary will increase. That's the assumption I'm taking, or it may decrease in the same way, but there's a relation between your salary and your grades that you get. Okay. So let's assume this is the scenario. So for a particular value uh, of X, I predicted that your salary will be Y dash and your salary was capital Y. So the difference between these two and this cap is usually representing that I have predicted this value. This is not the actual value. The difference between these two will be my error. Now, if I make, let's say uh, this Y1, this uh, Y2 and this Y3. Okay. I made uh, three predictions and each, in each of these predictions, you have some differences. So my error was E1, E2, E3. Okay. So let's take my error as these. So this is what I have done so far. Now there is a concept of something called as a bias. Okay. The bias is basically sum of all the errors upon the total number of predictions I have made. Okay. So let's say uh, that my model has predicted the value of uh, 1.5 lakh. This has 1.2 uh, lakhs and this has 80 K. Okay. And the actual value was uh, 1 lakh. Uh, for this one, it was 90 K. And for this one, it was 70 K. So the error which I got was minus 0.5 lakh. Uh, here it was 30K and here it was 10K. I can say this as 50K. So the overall errors that I got was minus 80K and my prediction was three, right? So this comes close to 26.66 minus 26.66. Now, what does this minus 26.66 represent? This minus sign basically tells me that more or less, uh, when I predict something, I underestimate the value. That is, whatever my predicted Y is, it is usually greater than the actual Y because of which my error actually goes into the negative direction. So if I usually have a salary of 1.5, it's very likely that the salary will be less than that. If this is my predicted value, that is what this negative sign represents. How much? So if I, let's say, uh, one of the models have a bias of uh, 10 minus 10 X and the other has the uh, bias of a minus 22.66. So what is the difference between these two? In this particular case, there's a very good chance that the salary will be much lesser. Okay. Let's say it will be close to one. Okay. If this is a scenario, then in this particular model, we predict 1.5. The actual salary will still be less because it's a negative, but it will more or less likely be 1.2 or 1.3 because the amount of mistake it does is much lesser. Okay. So this negative tells you the direction of the error, this value, the magnitude of the value tells you the amount of error. Okay. Similarly, let's say if I have one, which has a bias of plus 15. So if I told you that the salary is 1.5, the actual salary is going to be higher than this. Okay. Uh, it could be, let's say 1.7. Similarly, if I have plus 20, in my particular prediction, if it is 1.5, then the actual value will be close to 1.9, right? So from this, you will understand what is the um, representation or what is the interpretation of the magnitude of the bias and the sign of the bias. Okay. Now, uh, similarly, we have a, another measure, uh, and that is, uh, I think pretty common one that you guys uh, might have seen before as well. Just a second, the root mean square. Okay. The root mean square error. Now here, what we do is that, uh, when we calculate the errors, like in this particular case, I just added it up, right? It was minus 80 K, 
But in this particular case, what I do is I, I square this particular value. Then I add it up with the square of all the other values. Okay, rest the bottom is more or less the same. Now, the difference here is that if I have, let's say, an error of minus 50, and uh, then I predict something which gives me an error of plus 50. Okay, these are the two predictions. The sum total of my bias is zero. So my bias will give zero, which means it says that okay, you are not biased. Whereas my error will give me this as 2500 plus 2500 upon two, um, that will be 2500 under that's 50. Okay. So RMSE will give me 50 and root mean square, since it's the square root of the value, the actual magnitude will always be positive. So the sign here doesn't mean anything here, but the magnitude does. Okay. Uh, whereas if I do, let's say minus 30 and minus 30, it will give me the overall error of 30. Again, the bias is still zero. Now, what you get from this particular thing is that both these measures have something very important to tell you. Bias basically tells you on an average, what is the direction in which you go? Like whether more of your uh, predictions are less than the actual value or is it more than the actual value? If you are going negative, it basically means that this value is bigger than the actual value. So if you have a negative bias, it means that your predictions are higher than the actual value. Whereas if your prediction, uh, if your bias is positive, it means that this value is bigger, which means that the predicted value is smaller usually than the one which you have here. Now, if on an average, the plus and minuses are equal, it will cancel each other. Okay. Given the magnitude. So your bias should be less in either cases. You should not be biased in a particular direction. But even if you are not biased, you are making the prediction of plus 30 and minus 30. Your model is still doing mistakes, but your bias is giving you a zero. So the bias is not a good measure for the magnitude of mistake you are doing. It's good for the direction. If your magnitude has a higher, uh, if your uh, bias has a negative direction, you know that on an average, I predict higher values. So you know the direction of the error from bias. Whereas coming to the actual magnitude of the error, how much are you doing that you can get from RMSE because even if it's a minus 50 and then a plus 50, well, your error is actually 50 plus 50, right? And to do that particular thing, this square basically negates the effect of these signs, right? So the magnitude of error that you are doing, you can get it from RMSE. Whereas the direction in which you are doing an error or you are biased towards, you can get it from the bias value. So that is the uh, meaning what that is the reason why we need two of these and not one, one will not be able to give you the entire picture. Right. And that is uh, something you can also see from a uh, visual point of view. So let's see how would it look if you plot a graph of this. Okay, guys. Uh, so if we uh, visually look at this particular thing, um, you can see that if my predictions, okay, this is uh, or both the graphs are for my prediction errors. So this is my prediction error. Uh, based on the direction, whether it's positive or negative, I have uh, marked it uh, around zero. If it is negative in this direction, if it is positive in this direction. And similarly, uh, the actual results and the predicted results are mapped on a 45 degree line. That is, uh, if my predicted uh, results are lower than the actual one, it will lie in this, uh, this quadrant. If they are bigger, then this will lie in this quadrant. And if they are perfectly good, then they will lie on the line. Okay. This is basically saying actual minus predicted equals to zero. This line represents that. Okay. Now, if you see uh, this particular distribution will look like a bell curve, right? And uh, the thing is that if your bias is uh, not too much, this should take a shape like a bell curve. That is, you have equal amount of error on both the sides. But if you get a graph, let's say more like this, and this is your zero. It means that the graph is a bit skewed towards the positive error direction. That is on an average, this will get you a positive value. That is your predicted value is more or less negative, right? So you don't have to calculate the bias. You can just plot it up and you can see that close to the zero. If the graph is skewed towards one direction, you can know that, okay, yeah, there is uh, some amount of bias in my system. When it is no bias, it will have a normal curve. Okay. And your average error will lie close to your zero, a little bit here and there, but close to zero. Okay. So that is how you can uh, measure the 
uh, bias. So bias, the direction you can know from the uh, skewness of this uh, bell shape. Whereas how far this particular average error line is. This is your average error. Uh, how far your average error line is that can basically tells you um, how much on an average you have done uh, in either direction. So this line should not be too far from your zero. Now coming to the other graph here, this basically tells you that, okay, on an average, you can see that I have a lot more points in this direction. That is the actual value for any of these points. The actual value is higher than the predicted value. That is my actual value was bigger than this. That is the Y values were smaller. So I, on an average, I predicted smaller value, at least in this region. Okay. So you can see that for Y values in this, in this region. Okay. My predictions were a bit lesser. Whereas if you check out this particular area, you can see that it is more or less close to the line. So my predictions were very good for high value of Y's, but for low values, I had a particular bias towards predicting smaller values. Okay. So this also tells you in what region you have made a lot more mistakes. Uh, how can you make sure that there are none? Okay. So all of those things, other than that, at the same time, if you measure the distance of each of these predictions, uh, how far away they are from this particular line. Okay. That, uh, some of all of that errors will give you the root mean square. Okay. So on an average, how far the points are will basically tell you the root mean square value. Okay. So that is it for calculating or visualizing your error that you have in a particular model that you have built. Uh, in the next one, we should see, uh, interpreting a regression model. Uh, now, other than that, there is a particular kind of, um, uh, error table that we will see later on when we do what is called as classification. There we will have the predicted values in only two categories. Either there will be zero or one, true or false. So only one of two things. And our prediction will also be true or false. So in that case, true, true, good. If it is false, I have predicted false, then it's also good. But when actually it was true and I have said false, I have something called as a type one error. Whereas when it was false and I have predicted two, it's a type two error. So these are uh, basically calculated like, okay, how many errors did you had upon the total number of prediction that basically tells me that how many time percentage, uh, let's say 60%. That means that out of every 10, uh, six time I was correct and four time I was wrong. So this is uh, rather a simple view. There is not a lot to understand here. The total amount of error upon total number of prediction will tell you the accuracy of the model, right? So that is the, uh, measuring or, uh, calculating of the prediction errors. Now we will look into the models, how they are built and what uh, all that we need to do for a particular model to see uh, through that it is suitable for our example.